Glory to God, guys. It's Scott Jurgis. Hopefully you're doing well. Well, it's been quite a few weeks uh, since I last posted a video, and a lot has happened since that time. We're into a new year. We're hearing recurrent messages about variants of the COVID-19 uh, popping up around the world and a question as to whether or not the vaccine that um, man has created, the different pharmacies um, will address these different variations as new strains seem to be a little bit more contagious. And again, after the events recently at the Washington DC in which four people were killed, the riots, uh, we live in a very strange and unusual world. I've been kind of like praying and wrestling uh, with a video to present to you. And I guess I would like to start out by saying something that I learned many years ago through scripture. Everything in the heavens and earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as being in control of everything. Riches and honor come from you alone, and you are the ruler over all mankind. It is at your discretion that men are made great and given strength. It's First Chronicles 29, 11, and 12. And as I was studying things in the past regarding finances and regarding the things that we aspired, looking back upon that now, they don't seem as important as what we're dealing with today in terms of the immediacy. But during the time, it was one of those things where it reminded me that things of this earth are not something that because I don't attain them or things happen where I do attain them, that I need to remember that I did these things. Uh, people are so uh, concerned, and even the church is so concerned about the unknown. And, and that's a normal human reaction. That's normal for us to do. We don't know exactly what tomorrow will bring or whether we'll have an opportunity to go back and experience those things. And so being in Manathos was such a blessing. And hearing me a year later, and I've been going to church, but things, in a way, I want to keep them the same inwardly, but outwardly things are different. You know, the mask wearing, the way in which we receive the communion, the instruments in which we receive them, the caution. And now we couple that again with the variations of the COVID-19 and also with, you know, the seemingly instability of our government. And it creates anxiety, like we need someone to put things in order. There are people who we trusted in may not be looking out for our well-being, as we initially thought. But I think this period of time, again, everything in the heavens and earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. So if we believe, as Christians, we should in the sovereignty of God, that God is in control, but that we need to act out and pursue his blessings and grow closer to him, we need to realize some of these anxieties are oftentimes self-inflicted. You know, as often there's a sense of despondency and many people, when we talk about it, it's sort of like depression or feeling sadness or losing hope. But the earlier church fathers didn't address it as that. Were, those were the symptoms of despondency. But despondency were a result of our willingness or our lack of growing spiritually, growing in our faith, growing closer to God, making it a part of our life, our activity, our daily activities. And something about what's been taking place has just reminded me how distant we are from pursuing God. And when we feel anxiety or depression or sadness, I think the source of all this is our reluctance, laziness, pride, I don't need religion, whatever it might be, of not seeking God. It's these things that are deliberate, not that I'm special, but I think I know me and I'm not special. And I know the sinfulness inside me. And oftentimes we learn to pursue something by what we experience and what we don't enjoy, whether it's despondency, whether whatever these things are whatever sins in our life and the attributes of what comes forth from these sins teaches us that this is not a way we should live our lives. There's something more. And our willingness to turn and seek is what we need. And so my encouragement right now is we can't trust in medicine. We can't trust in politicians. We can't trust in government in many cases. We don't do things to 
dismiss them, but we can't place our hope in them as Christians. And now we have private companies who are now keeping an elected official, the president, from communicating directly to people. It shouldn't be that one part of government or the private sector is protecting us from hearing what an elected official might have to say, because it's a slippery slope. You know, I communicate with you on YouTube. At some point, the same people who viewed that as being potentially dangerous as someone could look at this video and say, a person who espouses turning to God, believing in the sovereignty of God, is something that's kind of dangerous, it's different. He's on the edge. He's on the cusp of what society is. And there's a slippery slope to this. So what I'm saying is there's a time for us to be bold. There's a time for us to not be militant or antagonistic but to step out in our faith. If you believe in the sovereignty of God and you are safe and you do everything you think is appropriate and you think you will control your life the day you end and it's in your hands, then I would say you're missing what the sovereignty of God means. Scripture teaches us that there's lots of temptations. Jesus was tempted. And in Matthew, it talks about Jesus' triumph over Satan. And in Scripture, you know, we endeavor to learn from Jesus, to emulate our Lord and our Savior in his life. But even he went through these temptations and tribulations. And again, you know the story, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again, Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So I think that's a very important example for us today to think about and dwell on. Not only the places we might find ourselves, and people say, do reckless things. Of course, we shouldn't do the reckless things, but we should also fear so again, if we're placing our hope, if you only were to take this medicine, not to say medicine's wrong, you know, but there are variations of this strain. So if you put your hope in this medicine and a variation comes down and you're sick, if your hope is in a vaccination, that's the point. Not that medicine is bad, but we're placing our hope in something. If you're placing your hope in a government to protect you and look out for your religious liberties, we hope that that takes place. But what if it doesn't? Do we just give up on practicing our faith? There are so many of us right now struggling to practice our faith and the freedom that we have. Once that's taken away, how many of us will continue? And then what does despondency mean if we fail to do what we need to do to grow closer to God? We become sad, depressed, anxious. These things impact us, impact our lives, impact others around us. So brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is, I just pray we have church leaders who are also walking out on faith, believing that God is sovereign, that a vaccination, a cloth, an instrument for communion, limiting fellowship is not necessarily the answer. It's walking out on faith as the church has done for thousands of years. To have faith that who we worship is not something that is just stationary, static. There's no give back. And at the end of this scripture, Jesus was told to depart and then the angels came and ministered to Jesus. And I would say the same thing happens in our lives. We need to be obedient. We need to grow. We need to have a hunger. We need to realize and confess our sins with a broken and contrite heart of God you will not despise. We need to walk out on faith, grow, trust. And then as a result of that, we're ministered to. 
Angels may indeed minister to us. I believe they do. But the Holy Spirit also ministers to us and impacts us and lives within us and reveals himself to us and makes our faith real. So I would encourage you during this difficult time to always remember, no one can take anything from you unless you allow them to take it from you or challenge you to give things up. Step out on faith, grow. Pray for our church leaders that they will also continue to step out on faith and lead us well, not to compromise in the face of secular society and the elevation of scientific principles over the freedom of our faith that was freely given to us as grace, as a gift, and that we're working toward that you're growing closer and closer to our Lord and Savior every day and that you're turning in these anxious days to your prayer robe, praying with the saints, praying to Jesus, experiencing the Holy Spirit in your life because there are great days ahead spiritually, but it might be difficult as we go in terms of the decisions we have to make. But I'm optimistic, and I will talk to you on the next Orthodox Gardener.